I just want to make a few comments about prayer. I don't know how your prayer life is at the moment, but I'm really concerned about our prayer lives. Prayer, as I always say, is not just to get things from God. Prayer is the system by which we know God. It's a system by which we connect to God. And if we become negligent in this regard, it won't be long before the devil will try to divert your attention upon things that are displeasing to God. If the fire is not burning, the flies will come. The only way you can send the devil out is by praying much so that there is fire in your belly. You know, take a piece of meat. And leave it on the counter for some time before you realize there are lots of flies coming in. Take the same piece of meat and throw it on a barbecue. All the flies depart because of fire. Fire is lacking in the hearts of men and women of God today. And that's what we need. We cannot be negligent in life regarding prayer and believe or imagine that we'll be victorious in life. Remember, the agenda of the enemy is to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't come in with a spear in his hand to show you his purpose. He doesn't come with a handgun in his hands. He doesn't come, but he comes in a very, very attractive way. He comes in to draw you closer, to entice you and make you feel comfortable And while you're comfortable, he'll kill you. That's something you have to notice. Many lives have been destroyed because we have have walked into the trap called luxury. At the expense of our prayer lives. At the expense of our spiritual. Nothing wrong with luxury. But when that becomes a priority in life that will steal your time in pr- for prayer, steal your time in the Word, steal your time in fellowship with God, then that becomes a trap that the enemy uses to destroy you. And your mind is always focused on what can I get? How can I become, you know, how can I make my life even more comfortable? And there's nothing wrong in living a comfortable life because God wants you to live a comfortable life. That, but that's not something you pursue after. That's something that should pursue you. That's the message of the gospel. And you don't have to struggle all your life. You don't have to be under pressure all your life. But you don't have to seek your own deliverance. God is our deliverer. You don't deliver yourself, but God will deliver you as you seek him. So we need to pray. And as I was thinking about it, listen, sometimes prayer is Prayer is really, let me tell you, the flesh hates prayer. I don't care what a mighty man of God you could be or a woman of God, prayer is a battle for the flesh. And if you don't bring discipline into play and crucify the flesh, it becomes extremely difficult for us to pray and to to pursue God. The strategy of the enemy is to dislocate you, dislodge you, and to disconnect you from God. And the thing, you know, when you, mo- when you notice in your life a distaste, there's no more real love and hunger to pray. You don't have a desire to study or read the word or listen to the word. It's a direct attack of the enemy. It's a direct attack of the enemy. Because that's how he starts working. That's how he starts his work. He doesn't tell you go and do this to commit sin. Because at that moment you're still strong. So he knows you're strong enough and you're going to say no. But as he begins to work on you, to dislocate you, to cause you to become slack in your Christian discipline to grow stronger and become, uh, you know, and, and be on fire for God, slowly that fire will wane. And that hunger will wane. And then comes a time, now he will say, go and do it. And he'll say, and he'll start giving you justifications. It's okay. Did you not see the other day that man of God did that? Did you not see on the television or somewhere on social media that such a great person that you know has done that? 
So now we are trying to justify our actions. Whereas a few days ago, we didn't even want to think about it. See how you, it's a slippery slide. So it's so important for every one of us to keep the fire burning. And the only way you can keep the fire burning is load it with wood. Load it with wood and keep working on that fire. Adjust it. Blow on it. Let the Holy Spirit blow on you. Let the fire begin to grow so that you become stronger and stronger in your walk with God and in your relationship with God. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, the Bible says, or the Lord teaches us and he says, pray that you enter not into temptation. Or the, another scripture says, watch and pray. Now, what does watch and pray mean? Watch and pray does not mean it has nothing to do with your eyes open or your eyes being closed, the natural eyes. It means to have your spiritual eyes open and your spiritual senses activated to see and to know what the Lord is saying and what the demonic kingdom is trying to do and plan against you. For example... When um, Peter declared, thou art the son of the living God. And Jesus said, son of Barjona, this is a revelation from the Father. The next thing he says, you know, talking about dying on the cross and dying and being raised the third day. He says, that shall not happen. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Right? That instance, remember that? And then the Lord says to Peter, he says, Satan has desired to sift you. Remember that scripture? Do you remember that scripture? Yes, yes. Right. Now, how did Jesus know that Satan had desired to sift Peter? Where did that information come from? It's in the realm of the spirit. And you cannot catch the revelation or the information in the realm of the spirit if you're not spiritual. If your spirit man is weak, if your spirit man is deadened, if your spirit man is, is being silenced by the flesh. You know, this is the trick, of the trick of the enemy. He uses the flesh to excite the flesh and then gives you reasons how you can justify your actions and appear spiritual. You got to be careful. So if my spirit man is weak... I cannot pick up what the Lord is saying. I cannot see what the Lord is saying. So he says, watch and pray. Now remember, Jesus, before he went to the cross, he went to the garden of Gethsemane and he began to pray. And he prayed three times the same prayer. And then after he prayed the third time, he said, the one that's seeking to come and pick, pick me up is coming. He's already here. And then the Bible says, lo, that man has come. Now, how did Jesus know that that guy was coming there? And how did he know that he was already there without seeing him in the natural? So there is so much available in the realm of the spirit that we are not aware of because we are more aware in the realm of the flesh and the natural that we are very, very ignorant about things in the spirit realm. Yes, we are filled with the Holy Ghost. We may speak in tongues for a little while, but we are not growing in it to be able to pick up realms, to, to step into different realms of the spirit. Let me tell you, there are several dimensions and several realms even in the spiritual realm. Several realms and several dimensions. And we are only praying in the Holy Ghost for an hour every day and there's no difference, there is no change, you don't connect, that means you have not graduated to go into the next realm. You have to work on your prayer life to, give, to be able to penetrate and move into those realms where now you have revelation, you have insight, you, you understand and God gives you information that is privy to you. Nobody else knows it. So what do I do? See, this is the reason why I want to pray much in the Holy Ghost is because I want to strengthen my inner man. I want to strengthen my inner man. See, when I'm weak in my physical body, it is so difficult to get uh, to be involved in physical activity. But when I become strong in my physical body, 
It's easy for me to walk, to run, to do whatever I have to do. But if I'm losing strength in the physical body, it becomes very difficult to do it. Is that true? When, you're, when, you're, when your physical body is weak and you, uh, you're feeling so tired, you sit in a classroom, you can sit anywhere, and, and somebody is teaching, nothing goes into your head. You're physically present, but nothing, you're not registering because you're not active. Your, your mental faculties are not activated to pick up those things. Likewise, in the realm of the spirit, if your spirit man is weak, even though you sit in one of the best churches or under the teaching of the best man of God, it will not impact your life. Isn't that what you see with Judas Iscariot? He sat under the teaching of the best teacher in the world. He sat under the teaching of the word of God. And yet, nothing changed him. So just because you belong to a church means nothing. Just because you come every Sunday means nothing if you don't work on building your spirit man. We cannot, let me remind you, we cannot be negligent about our spiritual walk with God. You cannot be spending 90% of your time only trying to make money and hardly give any time to God and think you'll be victorious. That money you work for and you've amassed, you will have to spend it on doctor's bills, hospital bills, and not enjoy it. But when God blesses, nobody can steal it. So work on, on your spirit, man, to be able to capture what God has to say to you. And walk with the strength that God provides to you. Amen. So the spirit, man, has to be strengthened. Look, the Bible says, when I pray in the Holy Ghost, I build up my most holy faith. Now, remember, that's one aspect. Your faith is being built, but that's not the only aspect that is at work. The Bible says in, in Ephesians chapter three, chapter 3, verse 16. Can you put that up? Yeah. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit where? In the inner man. Praise God. See, the inner man has to be strengthened. And so what do I do? I spend quality time. In a disciplined manner, praying and meditating on the Word of God. Praying and meditating on the Word of God. This is essential for spiritual growth. Read the Bible, stay there, sit. Let the Holy Ghost speak to you. And while you're sitting there, you can keep talking in the Spirit. Activate your spirit, man. Everybody wants to hear God's voice. Is that true? Yes. But I said this before. I want to say it again. Listen. God doesn't always speak with audible voice. Nor does he speak with an inner voice. There are different ways that God communicates. <coughs> Get me some water, please. <coughs> God communicates in different ways. <clears throat> you know, in the old times, when there was war, <clears throat> they didn't go around the camp saying, hey, there's war, there's war, let's gather together, come on, our, everybody from every tribe, come over, let's go to war. No, they never went around sending people to go and say that. All they had to do was blow the trumpet. The trumpet carried a message. Every sound has a message. There is a sound in the spirit that you can hear. So when God communicates, it could be in, in many ways. And if your spirit man is not strengthened to understand and pick up those signals, you'll miss out of what God has to say to you. How does he communicate? Some of the ways he communicates is through impulses, through urgings, through leadings, through impressions. You feel impressed, but then you say, is it me? Is it God? Is it the devil? See, that's, that tells us that you have not matured enough to become a son. <laughs>